starting to get loaded up here so we can head down to Tennessee to pick up dad. Then we're gonna head out to North Carolina to get my bus. So I've had another toolbox for this truck for a while, but it can't close and lock. The piece that should go through here is missing on it, but I got a really good deal on it. But I've got that loaded up. I've added a bunch of extra stuff just for this trip. One of the things that I just grabbed out of my garage is a roll of camo tape. If you guys have ever seen the pictures of when we got dad's bus home, which I'm pretty sure it was from North Carolina. Anyway, this is the tape that we used to tape the headlights on. So just to keep up the tradition, something is definitely getting taped on my silver sides of camo duct tape to get home. So just checking oil before we leave here. And normally, this truck's been about 1,500 miles since the oil change. Before we started running Hyperlube, we would have already used about a quart to a quart and a half. It took a half quart after 1,500 miles. Far from perfect, but good enough for this truck. Made it to Louisville. If you look over there, I don't know if you guys can see it very well. My windows are pretty tinted. There's a C17 making a bank turn over there. I saw one of the, uh, two of those actually, over Columbus, Indiana on the way down here. They're flying relatively low. But we're making good time. Uh, should be able to make it there on one tank. I filled up right as I left, so shouldn't have to make any stops. The plan is to just get down there today, and then tomorrow we're gonna head to North Carolina to go see the bus. Looks like they got quite a few planes stored out here at the airport. I know I live pretty close to Indianapolis airport and there have been a lot of planes stored there. Southwest has quite a few of them grounded over there. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys follow uh, Blanco Lirio, Juan Brown, here on YouTube. I've uh, been watching some of his videos lately. Unfortunately, even with states starting to open back up and stuff like that, it's looking like for the airline industry, uh, it's going to be a long, difficult road for them to come back from this. Oh, that's where it is. I wasn't expecting that. I kind of figured it was the other direction. You're having fun with this, aren't you? Give me the tour. things wheels will fall in those holes yeah I wouldn't try that so we're getting ready to take off and hit the road I came down here to look at the garden setup the mom's got still amazed every time I look at this view can't even see the ends of the property anywhere you look out here area to get some lunch and to stretch our legs. It's been like what 330 miles or so into the 500 mile trip. Yep. Not a bad spot. made it here. As you can hear, one of the first problems, the blower motor is stuck on. All the switches are off right now, so we're going to pull the dash apart here in a second see why that has power when it doesn't. It's killed the battery though, so we've got it hooked up to a truck right now and it's charging a little bit. Once we get some power in it here, we'll get it started.
recovery. Aw, I missed it. I was going to come over and watch your one inch rip those lug nuts off. I wouldn't take all of them off. No, that's why I'm not. <laughs> Send it. I need to get one of those. If you want, I can back my truck around too. It needs the rear work lights on it. Yeah. I've got another set of lights. Okay. Like that. All right, so we got the new batteries in. Brandon brought them for us, donated them, traded them. We'll work something out on that. And then we just got the alternator to start charging. So it's charging. We've got lights on the back. got headlights we got the blower motors to stop working there was a relay shorted out behind the pony motor in here that once we disconnected power to that relay that uh, the blower motors stopped so that's, I'm pretty happy with that the new steer tires are on we've adjusted the front brakes already we started greasing it we didn't get here until like 7 o'clock though, so, I mean, we were losing light from the start. Look at that! So, the nice thing about these side work lights, they do blind you a little bit, but, oh, that sucks. Anyway, you can see the toolbox pretty well with them on. So, we got the batteries swapped around. Went ahead and tempted an electric fan, because there is no shroud. Try to help keep it cool, because we are going to have a pretty serious grade to climb. Other than that, we've got that blower motor issue fixed last night. Going around now, make sure all the doors are sealed. Ratchet strap that holds the bumper up, make sure that's tight. The bolts out of the front bumper are gone, or the body that holds the bumper up. And then uh, camo duct tape lives on on the Silver Sides rescues with fixing the hole in the seat. stop and fueled it up only took like 32 gallons between the two tanks so they're pretty full now we don't know which tank this thing is pulling diesel from so we're gonna have to stop again about 100 miles probably and we'll see which tank is using diesel I'm ready whenever you are I've been in direction
minutes into driving since we filled up with fuel. Everything's looking pretty good on it so far. I'm not really seeing any excessive smoking from back here. It's not making any weird noises. It is a little bit underpowered from what Dad is saying up the hills. But we'll have to wait and see what it's like. Um, I mean, we really haven't had a good grade yet, but we've also, I mean, this is the first few miles we've put on it, and we have not changed those fuel filters yet. Uh, we're going to try to make it back on them, but if we have to change them, we'll see if we can find one. Um, but we're doing pretty good so far. Oh, look at that. Land Rover. Some old Land Rovers. Well, that sucks. Looks like somebody lost their toolbox. Oh, that's one of the drawers in it, too. That's going to take a minute to pick up. Hopping on 485. In the quarter mile, merge onto I-485 outer. There we go. The GPS told you for us. So this is going to be our first actual interstate run here. I just checked with Dad right before we got on here on the radio. He said everything's looking and feeling pretty good up there. The gauges are looking good. Cool attempts running a little low. We haven't broke 150 yet, but I'm, I'm okay with that. I'd, I'd rather be running cooler right now. I mean, we don't know a whole lot about this bus. And I'd rather have room in the cooling system if it's going to get a little warm going up hills and stuff. Continue on I-485 outer for 28 miles. Still moving right along here. Um, he wants to do 55. I keep having to call out speeds because he does not have a speedometer on the bus. But uh, every few minutes he keeps working his way back up to about 60. And we'll back down to about 55 again. I'm trying to take it easy on it. We don't want to push it hard right now. I mean, it's still pretty unknown, so I'm just going to stay in the slow lane and keep about 55. Oh, that poor transit. Oh, that can't be good. Those things blow up without having boats on the back. Also, that's a unibody. That is, that is a lot of, oh, God, it's swaying. Do you guys see that? This is why I don't trust other people with trailers at all. Taking the bypass right now around Charlotte. Hopefully traffic's not going to be too bad through Charlotte. Um, if we planned everything out today right, it's uh, I think around 10 o'clock, 10.30 right now. So we might hit a little bit of traffic maybe in Knoxville. Uh, Nashville's always going to have traffic. I don't think that really matters what time. Oh, he just nailed that dead squirrel. Um, but yeah, uh, I think hopefully if we hit this right, maybe Nashville will be our only bit of traffic on it, that'd be nice. Still rolling along here. A minute ago, uh, just judging by keeping the same distance and the speed I'm going in the flatbed here, that thing was doing like 67, 68 miles an hour. So, called it out on the radio and we slowed it back down a little bit. We're back down to 55 again. I'm, I'm pretty happy though. I mean, it's moving along just good and I'm super happy with the old flatbed here. A uh, hell of a turnaround from it stabbing me in the back seven days ago and dying to driving a $700 truck to North Carolina. At this rate, she's definitely earning her keep. I might actually do the body work on it and make it look nice again. Pulling a little bit of a grade here. I don't know if it looks like it, but I'm doing pretty good. He started about 67, down to about 65, 60. 60 miles an hour now by the top so seven mile an hour loss up that hill i don't think that's too terrible wasn't seeing any smoke or anything didn't look like it was loaded up that was the first longer grade we tried to pull and it wasn't too steep but still a decent one drive for transit I love quickly conversions I've never actually got to work on a transit one but they do some really nice four-wheel drive conversions on vans Man, 
drive through North Carolina, every curve, there's just a better and better view out of the windshield. Also kind of glad I put a low temp thermostat in the 
flatbed here, we're running about 190. It normally runs like 170, but we're not going very fast. I've got it locked out of overdrive right now, and I don't have a ton of direct airflow because I'm behind him and we're not going very fast. So it's doing decent though. I mean, she's a little tired, 271,000 miles on this thing. This bus is gutted right now. There's nothing inside of it, so it makes it a little bit easier on us. Shield is 
exhaust to see what the exhaust setup on it is. Uh, that is something at some point I'm probably going to want to take a look at. Probably going to try to do a 4 inch setup similar to what's on Lenny. Although I might not do quite as many mufflers. I might just figure out a way to try to get one instead of two and maybe go with a little bit bigger one in the drop section. But it, I'm pretty happy. It sounds decent from behind it. Welcome to Tennessee. We just pulled off. Going to fill the bus back up. A little over 200 miles into the trip. We're back into Tennessee. Hub temps look good. Dad just shot them when I went inside to use the restroom. Front hubs are about 90 degrees, 95. The rears are about 80. Uh, shot coolant temps on it. Coolant temps are looking decent. I'm going to check oil here in a minute. It's moving right along. I do see a little bit of an oil leak from the right rear hub externally. It's probably going to have to check diff fluid real quick, but... It's doing decent. Made it to Knoxville. Next stop from here will be Nashville. Between Knoxville and Nashville now. Luckily, it looks like there's some clouds up ahead. Probably going to see some rain. When I radioed down a little bit ago, he said it's probably about 110 degrees inside the bus right now. The window doesn't have a crank on it, so we can't roll it down. I don't really know that we want to try to either in case we can't get it back up. He's probably going to be happy to get some shade and some cooler temperatures because it's definitely getting up in the 80s right now. Probably mid 80s and that thing is just baking as the sun hits it. It's doing pretty good on temperature though. Uh, coming into Knoxville we had to slow down a little bit. The temperature was getting a little high for our liking. Uh, so we shot the thermostat housing temperatures. We we're seeing about 170 when it was reading about 150 on the gauge. And we were seeing about 170 on the gauge, so it's getting up near 190. So we backed it down for a little while, let it cool down. There is no fan shroud on that bus, like I said, and it's still got the old variable pitch fan. So I mean, that's a little sketchy. Those things are kind of known for coming apart. Like I said, we did add that electric fan. I'm really glad we did because that might have been the difference between us being able to keep going at 50 and having to slow down and let it cool off for a while. But these things really do not run well without fan shrouds. I mean, you gotta think that radiator sits in there sideways. There's no direct airflow, nothing pushing air through that radiator. It is completely relying on what that fan can pull. So without a shroud, it's not being very efficient. So that other fan is definitely helping having that pusher fan on there. But like I said before too, that pusher fan is not in the hot spot of the radiator. Uh, if you're standing looking at it, I think believe it's the upper left-hand corner is the hot spot on the silver side. So as far forward and up as you could get would be the place that we should have been able to put that, but we couldn't get that door open on the side. You know, that's 
to be a project for later to get that freed up and working. So also gonna have to figure out what's up with the wiring on that uh, scroll cage for the blower motors because that thing was running nonstop. It looks like the relays are welded shut or something like that because anytime the bus gets power, those relays immediately power up. All the switches are disconnected and everything on the trigger side. But it's still moving along pretty good. Uh, that little bit of a hub leak we saw back when we filled up in, I don't remember where exactly that was out in the Smokies. Uh, I went ahead and made sure that all of the axles were tight. Took a 7 8 and a pretty long half inch drive ratchet. Just went through and snugged them all up just to make sure that they weren't coming loose. Uh, they were decent. We are missing one bolt on the right side though. So that's my guess is that's going to be where that leak is coming from on there. It's not bad. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on obviously gear oil. Make sure that we're not running low. But that's going to be a future problem to tear that all apart and reseal it and stuff like that. Um, I'd already talked to Dad too and told him that if he wants to do any work on the bus while I'm gone, just let me know what parts it needs or materials. So, unless he's got some stuff coming up soon, I'm kind of hoping that he might want to tear into the hubs on it and see what's going on with that. But we'll see. temperature down but Merge onto I -40 it's just gonna be better right now to probably stop and let it cool off for a little bit all right we let it sit for a few minutes we came in thermostat housing is reading in the mid 190s we're down into the 170s now but it's kind of hot to be sitting there so we're gonna get back on the road getting back on the road now probably sat there for five minutes or so Enough time that the bus came down in temp zone. We're gonna have to take it a little slower though. You are clear to merge. Uh, a little bit slower because it's it's definitely getting up there in the temperatures. I, I'd be surprised if we're not up to 90 yet. Uh, outside in a direct sun, like I said before, there is no fan shroud, so the cooling system is not working as efficiently as it can. So we're just gonna drop speed for a little bit. Hope that we get some shade or something to bring the temperature down, but for right now, we're just gonna go a little slower. Going up another grade here, we're still having some issues with it running warm. It's running about 185 degrees at 50 miles an hour. So, just sitting back here with my hazards on, keeping going about 50 right now. Still hoping that it uh, uh, loses some temp or we get some shade or something. Can't push 60, 65, you know, even 55 miles an hour right now. It's getting hot, so we're cruising right around 50. Still making progress, though. I know we're less, should be less than two hours out if we were running normal speeds. Looks like we're about 30 miles out of Nashville. Just gotta take it slow. 
definitely need to see about getting a fan shroud for this bus. And then get rid of that old variable pitched fan that's on there. Made it into Nashville. Uh, still going slow. That's 20 minutes or so. We've been down to doing about 50 miles an hour. Still running warm. Still no sign of it cooling off outside, so it's probably going to be our pace for the rest of the trip. But it's not running too bad. The sign up there just said 89 degrees on the side of the road. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. So it, it's definitely hot out. No fan shroud. It's just, it's killing us. We, we can't push it any harder. It's going to overheat. But progress is progress. I, I'd rather make it back limping at 50 than try to push it and risk hurting the engine. made it back and it made it to the top of the hill well got the steer tires all swapped back over got sages loaded up back in my truck 
Big thanks to him for letting me borrow those steers to get this thing home. Also, thank you to everyone who donated to the live streams. All the Patreons. Without you guys, this wouldn't have happened now. It would have had to wait a while. I really do appreciate it. But unfortunately, I have to get back to Indiana. I've got stuff to do in the shop. So the bus is going to have to sit here for a little bit. But it's back. And now, at least when I come down here, I can keep doing a little bit of work here and there on it. Start making some progress on it. I think the first thing we're going to do is start wiring it. I don't know if I'm going to take all the wires out of the dash yet, but I want to run all new wires. It's all the lights and the roof. And run a chase to the back to have all new wires terminate in the engine bay. And then from there, we'll probably start to build out bedroom first, bathroom second, kitchen and living room will be last. Uh, we might do some body work. Anywhere that there are holes in the bus, that's going to be one of the first priorities is to get all the holes sealed up in it. After that, once the inside's done, then we'll start focusing on mechanicals and the body.